going to introduce you to another way of measuring angles. Okay? There are a lot of things that we measure in different amounts, right? If I ask you, uh, let's see here, Ethan, how tall are you? 150, okay. Okay, Gavin, how tall are you? Six foot four. So he's six something and he's 150. How come he's so much bigger than him? Like, you're enormous compared to that little shrimp here, right? So what's the difference? Somebody is saying six feet, four inches, the small one. And someone is saying 150 something, you said. You don't know what the last number is. That's okay. But that one was in centimeters right? So we have two different ways of measuring and they're different sizes. Radians is just another way to measure angles. Now you know um, what degrees are because that's what you've used almost your entire math life. You've been dealing in degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out what a radian is. So we start off with a circle because that's what we're doing with just about everything here. Um, there we go. There's a circle. And it looks a little bit oblong, but that's just the problem with the uh, projector. Okay. What kind of, I drew the circle and I made the radius here the same length as the bottom of this triangle, which is a little bit bent out of shape. It's okay. What kind of triangle is this if it had a special name? It's more than just an isosceles. It is an isosceles triangle. It's an equilateral triangle because all the sides are the same. So what we could do with this equilateral triangle is if I push this down perfectly, I could make the edge of that equilateral triangle bend to be perfectly along the circle. And if I did that, then this blue line would be equal to both of these radiuses. Correct? How big is that angle, do you think, in degrees? Before, if I just have my equilateral triangle, what are all the angles? 60. And then I pushed down on this one a little bit. Can you see that that, I need one more arm. Do you see that that angle there squishes just a little bit? If I really, oh, it broke it. If I really push down, it would squish even <laughs> more. I have to order a new one on Amazon. And so this angle, Would you agree that it, we could say it's a little bit less than 60 degrees? Okay. Now, when all of these are, this is a radius, this is a radius, and this is a radius, this is the definition of what one radian is. If the arc length is one radius, then the angle that is there is one radian. So when we have an arc length that's one radius, then the angle is one radian. And it doesn't matter how big or how small the circle is, that angle would stay the same no matter if you made it bigger or smaller. And so what's different from a radian then from degrees is a radians actually based on a measurement. Whereas with degrees, how many degrees are there in a circle? 360. Why? Someone decided 360. 
It's like, why? Because there's 360 days in a year? Should they really have made like 365 So that because there's 365 days in a year? So that would be how many degrees should be in a circle. But that doesn't divide nicely in half. So that didn't work. So let's just round down to the nearest 360. I'm not sure. But degrees are uh, a measurement that someone just decided, let's do 360 in a circle, right? There's another form of measurement that we don't do. Have you ever heard of gradients? That's like degrees and radians, and I don't know. They're, they just decide instead of 360, let's make it 400. Just because it divides even nicer when you divide by 4. Wouldn't it be nice if a right angle was 100 degrees instead of 90 degrees? But would that mess you up and everything else? Probably. So that's what gradients are. But we never use those. So we'll just erase them. But anyways, one radian is when this happens. So now we want to figure out how many degrees is one radian exactly. A little less than 60 is not quite an exact number. So first of all, if this is one radian, and I make another radius on the outside to there, that would be two radians. And then another one to there, that would be three radians. And four, and five, and six, and uh, how many radians are there in a circle? Two pi. How did you come up with that? How many radians in a circle? And he said 2 pi. And why is that? Well, when I count along the outside, what is that called? Circumference. And what is your formula for circumference? 2 pi. Are you, all, are you okay if I write the R there? Uh -huh. <laughs> it looks a little far away. I'll put, is, it, is that all right if I put brackets? Does it mean the same thing if I put brackets around it? Yeah, 2 pi R either way. But what the circumference formula is actually telling you when it says 2 pi R is that if you drew radiuses around the outside of your circle, you would need roughly 6.28 of them. You've got one here, two, three, four, five, six, and a bit. And that little extra bit is about 0.28 of another radius. So how many radians are in a circle? Well, the number of radians, because every time you have a radius on the outside, you have a radian in the middle. So if you have 6.28 radiuses around the outside, you would have 6.28 or 2 pi radians in a circle. Okay? So now, does it make sense that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees? Because if that's one time around the circle, it'd be 360 degrees. Question is, how could I possibly find out how many degrees one radian is? One radian. Yeah, divide 360 by 2 pi. I'm going to make a mistake on my calculator. I want you to watch. You ready? 360 divided by 2 pi. Anybody know my mistake? Yeah, you need either put it in brackets because you're dividing by more than one thing, or if you have, use the fraction button if you have it. Is it a little bit less than 60 degrees? Yes, 57.296, OK? 
Okay. Approximately 57.3 degrees. So in your textbook, um, oh, went one too far. In your textbook, they have the definition of a radian as well. They've got a picture of it there. Of course, I tried to use my highlighter and everything froze. So when you have when you have the arc length is the same as your radius, that's one radian. And then if we go to the next page here with 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. This is based on the idea of a whole circle, right? You know the 360 degrees is in a whole circle from your previous knowledge. And now you know that there's 2 pi radians from your circumference formula for a circle. And so we can say that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. And starting with this, it's really easy. They're written here. You don't need to rewrite them. It's really easy to go from 2 pi is 360 to pi radians is 180 degrees. Does that make sense what they did? Just divided both sides by 2. And one of the things from there that you could figure out is once you have these, can you see it's really easy to get to one degree? What would I have to do? I'd have to divide by 180. So one degree is pi over 180 degrees, I mean radians. And if you wanted to get to one radian from here, you'd have to divide both sides by pi. So one radian is 180 degrees over pi. And one of the things that we have to do in this unit is be able to switch back and forth between different angles in degrees into radians and in radians into degrees. So these two, these two right here, which are listed right here and right here are really helpful for switching. If I wanted to find 10 degrees in radians, I could just use this second one and multiply both sides by 10. Does that make sense? If I wanted to find 5 radians in degrees, I could just multiply this one both by 5. And you can figure out any radians to degrees, so those red ones are really quick for converting. The red ones are also easily to mess up if you're trying to memorize something. Perfect. If you're trying to memorize them, why are they easy to mix up? Can you see that they're very, very similar? One's 180 over pi, the other one's pi over 180. So if you're trying to memorize them, you could easily mix them up. That's why. I usually just memorize these ones because it's going to be easy to know. Oh, whole circle, 2 pi, whole circle, 360. Pretty easy to get to 180 from there by dividing by 2. And then if you want to get 1 to be 1, if I want 1 radian, oh, I have to divide by pi. If I want 1 degree, I'd have to divide by 180. And that will let you remember them easier than if you just try to memorize them directly. Okay. Um, other thing that gets interesting with radians, you know how there's a degree symbol? 
There is no radian symbol. So when you say the angle is 30, and you write it like that, you mean 30 radians. Whenever you don't write an angle symbol, okay, it's a lot different. Okay, and 6.28 radians is 2 pi. That's a full circle. 30 would be like five full rotations. That's a really huge angle, 30 radians. In fact, if we want to figure out what is 30 radians in degrees, we'd have to go 30 times 180 divided by pi. Okay, that's only 1,718 degrees. And so if you meant 30 degrees and you said 1,718 degrees, that would be a big difference. So the symbols get really important. If you're talking in degrees, you have to include the degrees sign. If you're in radians, you don't need any symbol, but it does mean that you're working in radians. You could, but you don't have to write anything. So at the beginning, I wrote radians each time just to clarify, but if I just wrote pi, it means pi radians. Now, we got to be careful here because some of you will make this mistake. What, what's pi equal to? 3.14, okay? Some of you will start to say later on, oh, pi is equal to 180. It's not. Pi is still 3.14. Pi radians equals 180 degrees, right? You have to have the units there to make them equal. Does 1 equal 12? No. <laughs> but 1 foot is 12 inches. So then it's the same. But you can't just say 1 is equal to 12. If it is, give me $12, I'll give you 1 back. It'll be a good deal. We can do that all day. I can maybe retire early. Awesome. And then, oh, and then I could write... In my retirement, write a book, How to Steal Money from Students, and make even more money. <laughs> Be great. Okay. Now, in our section 6.2, we had a formula that we created for arc length in degrees. Our formula was a proportion out of 360 multiplied by the circumference, correct? So our arc length, when we only wanted a portion of, of the whole circumference, we just had to figure out what proportion that was. That's the theta out of 360. And then the 2 pi r is your whole circle. Now we're going to look at that same formula in radians. It would be instead of theta out of 360, you would have theta out of 2 pi times your circumference. And this is one of the first formulas on your formula sheet, except they do simplify it. I actually still like this like exactly like this because it's a proportion. But do you see how tempting it is to simplify? Like what would happen with this 2 and that 2? cancel out. Nothing's more fun in math than going choo, choo, canceling things out, right? And the pies, choo, choo, they go away. And you're just left with a really simple looking formula. Okay? And that formula for arc length is on your formula sheet. But it only works if theta is in radians. So this formula is not on your formula sheet, but you're allowed to use it if you'd like. Again, it's easy to remember because it's based on an idea, a proportion of the circumference. You could memorize this formula too because it's exactly the same, but it simplifies nicely and this one is on your formula sheet.